Hi, I'm Nav, I'm 41 years old. I was diagnosed with bowel cancer at age 38 years old. I probably had symptoms around 2018. My initial symptoms were bleeding uh, when I was going to the toilet and it wasn't a huge amount and it was something that was off and on and I ignored it. And I remember the bleeding was getting worse and the first doctor I went to didn't seem too concerned, sent me off and said, okay, we'll do some bloods and we'll go from there. Blood test came back all fine, didn't show that anything was wrong with me. And during this time, my symptoms are getting worse. I'm bleeding a bit more. I'm starting to go to the toilet quite often now. And this probably was around about September, October time of 2018. And I've gone back to the doctor to say I'm, I'm feeling worse I've seen a different doctor this time something didn't sit right with her and she said okay all well, your blood tests are fine before she decided that it, she was just gonna it was gonna be IBS she said she just wanted to make sure that everything else was okay so she said she was gonna refer me for a colonoscopy and then I had about an eight week wait for my colonoscopy as it was an urgent one and during that time my health really really deteriorated and it got to a stage where if I was going for a wee, I had blood splurting out of my backside. I was going to the toilet maybe up to seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. I rung up the hospital to ask when my appointment was going to be because by then I actually started to feel sick. I was still active and I felt quite tired, but at the same time I felt maybe I'm tired because I'm going to the loo so much. Maybe I'm tired because I'm working so many hours. Cancer didn't enter my head at this stage. End of January, I get my appointment for my colonoscopy. When he put the camera inside, what he actually saw was a tumour. And the tumour that he found was in my rectum. And it was quite a, a large tumour. It was 8 to 10 centimetres in size. The colonoscopy procedure was fine. People get anxious, quite anxious about it, but I didn't feel a thing. I could tell that he was taking little snips of something I mean, I asked him what he was taking biopsies for, and he said he would tell me later. And it turned out I had a couple of polyps further up in my intestines, and then I had this large mass in my rectum. And it was um, on that day, I found out that there was a 10 centimeter tumor, which is possibly cancerous or likely to be cancerous. And I was told that it's very large, looks fairly aggressive, and that they would need to start treatment quite soon afterwards. And then I left the hospital in a day. I had to tell my sister, I had to tell my family and everyone close to me. And that's probably the hardest thing I've had to do. It was hard. It was a struggle to get the words out and to say that they found a tumour and it's most likely to be cancerous. And I didn't understand how you could tell me that I have cancer because I'm fit, I'm healthy, I do all the things that you're supposed to do not to get ill. I was still running, doing 10Ks and playing football and I just didn't get how it could happen to me. I couldn't understand how they could see by looking at it that it's cancer. But obviously they're super experienced, they know what they're doing. After that, we went for a CT scan, went for an MRI, went back for another MRI because the CT showed that there could have been something in my liver. Couldn't determine what that was, went for a PET scan and then I was all okay apart from what was in my bowel, in my rectum. They were quite certain that the cancer hadn't spread anywhere else. I, then I was ready for an operation. During the time I was having an appointment with my consultant, she speaks to me about having a stoma bag. I didn't really know what a stoma bag, or a stoma, sorry, was. I was like, no thanks, I'm not having that. No, I'd rather not have that. How can I live my life and that's not normal? My insides are gonna be on my outside. I just didn't get it. How can I do my job? How can I go out and about? The consultant was excellent. She spent a lot of time with me and my family and was really reassuring and made an appointment to speak to a stoma nurse who normalized having a stoma, showed me pictures of people having a stoma who you wouldn't think would have a stoma because anyone can. Then I walked out of the meeting with my stoma nurse and thought, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And we spoke about what kind of stoma are we having. Due to the size of the tumour, the whole of my rectum was removed, but I had a little bit of gap between basically my backside the whole. Um, so I had enough room that I could try and have a reversal of my stoma. When they went in to do the operation, they were able to give me uh, an ileostomy, which is a, a temporary stoma. And that's what I ended up having in March of 
2019. I was in hospital for I think 10 days. I had a pretty tough time in hospital. I got quite sick. It took me quite a while to recover just from the procedure. I had two. I ended up having two two operations in there um, whilst I was in there for 10 days. I remember the nurses and the doctors tell you the quicker you get up, the quicker you start moving around, the better your recovery will be. But when you wake up from such a large operation, it's hard to get up. And I was, I, I don't think I got out of bed for two, three days at least. Hospital was, uh, was a hard time for me. Not as hard as the second time in hospital because that was during COVID. Um, and it's a very, very lonely experience. And then after 12 days, I was discharged. I went home, got a phone call from my a uh, consultant who told me that I had my biopsies back and the tumour was actually stage 2. Before I had the operation they told me it was quite likely to be stage uh, 3 because my lymph nodes were swollen. So, fantastic. Don't need any chemotherapy, don't need any radiotherapy. Technically at that stage I'm in remission but it doesn't feel like the cancer went at that stage. She rung me and I was like, that's really, really good news. But it just felt like it was the start of something. It didn't feel like that was it for me. The weeks leading up to having my operations, they were really hard because you're thinking that this thing is inside you and it's killing you. Every second it's inside you, you just want it out. You just want it out and you're waiting weeks for scans or results of your scans tests and then waiting for your operation i've been told now okay you're in remission but for some reason it, it didn't hit me i don't know if it ever has at the time having the stoma i think i really embraced it and i knew i could because my stoma nurse told me i could with my stoma i'd say it took a, a good six months before I felt comfortable, a good six months before I felt comfortable with it. It got to a stage where I was playing football, I was operational in my job as a police officer, I was going out running, going to gym, I was going out and about. It didn't stop me from doing anything I wanted to do. Obviously you can't do everything the same as before, so I had lots of little adaptations in my life and I felt good. I felt really good. I felt good speaking to people about what I was going through, hopefully helping people. I was hoping to have a reversal of my stoma in about six months after your insides have had an opportunity to heal but my backside was basically too tight so I needed some dilations and I had about four dilations before there's enough room for uh, stools to pass. Dilations are just a day procedure in the hospital in and out same day under general anaesthetic and after four dilations I was good to go. I was ready, ready for a reversal of my stoma and that was March, April of 2020, which as everybody knows is when COVID happened. So that caused a delay, that caused a delay of a year. In May of last year, so 2021, I got an opportunity finally to have my stem reversal. I wasn't prepared for it. I don't feel like there's enough information out there on the recovery side of having a stem reversal. I ended up being in hospital for 12 days, I think this time, and got, yeah, again, quite ill. It took nine days, I think, for my bowels to finally start functioning and to have some action. I actually think that the recovery from having the reversal of my stoma was harder than the recovery of having the tumour removed and having a stoma in the first place. With the reversal of my stoma, so I had a low anterior resection, so it basically means that my rectum was removed, so I don't have that, that waiting area, that holding area, and the lower part of my colon which they stretch down to attach, reattach to, to my backside, that has to learn to behave like a, a rectum would. I was told recovery can take for that to learn what it's going to do. It can take a few weeks, it could take a few months, it could take longer. I had issues with going or trying to go all the time and I had what was called clustering where I really needed to go but I couldn't go and it was just a very small amount going. I could never empty my bowels. I could spend four to six hours a day on the toilet trying to go and it was so painful. And so after I had a couple more dilations and that didn't really cause 
any more improvement, I was stretched out as much as I could. And when I finished having the couple, those couple of dilation procedures and got to a stage where is my bowel going to function okay or not, I was able to look into having irrigation, so it's daily, daily enemas I think they're called. Every morning now I irrigate and it's been seven weeks and it's been a huge improvement. It's not great, but it's been a huge improvement to what I was like seven, eight weeks ago. So now I empty my bowels in the morning when I irrigate and throughout the day you shouldn't feel like you need to go. It's still a process, but just getting back to a quality of life that I had when I had a stone up for me would be great. So I'm still got a few more weeks of seeing how the irrigation works with me and then hopefully that'll be a new way of functioning. I'm fortunate that I've got close friends and family around me and that my work was super supportive and that I'll continue to be super supportive as well. I'm very fortunate that I was diagnosed at stage two. For me it's great but it's a frustrating thing because I think that my quality of life in comparison to other people that have been found at stage three or stage four of bowel cancer is a big difference and bowel cancer is one of the most curable cancers if it's found at an early stage and there's lots of things that we can do to help that we can talk about it more we should be able to get access to the facilities that would be able to diagnose us easier possibly than we are at the moment we shouldn't be getting fogged off with it could be IBS or colitis knowing that what my quality of life is and comparing it to others I feel frustrated that this isn't getting picked up earlier on with people. It's uh, coming up to three years of being in remission. It has made me a stronger person, definitely. It makes you closer to friends and family. I've got a lot of people that I, uh, I can rely on. It also makes you share your experiences, for me, more with people uh, in the cancer community. And I think that's really important because the more we share, the more we can, can help each other. I've been able to deal with and get that emotional support from everybody. I find it difficult to listen about other people's cancer stories. I lost a, a good friend who was diagnosed a couple of weeks after I was and it was her third time of being diagnosed with cancer and she was diagnosed in a couple of weeks and she was one of the first people I spoke to about my diagnosis. She shared her experiences with me and helped me get through it and she didn't last a year and I think that was the most difficult part for me. In terms of there's support out there when it comes to counselling, there's emotional support, there's physical support for you when, when you're dealing with a diagnosis yourself, but that was harder for me. And that was a time when I felt like actually I needed extra emotional support. I had some counselling to get help me with the bereavement because you're just in a place of sadness that you can't get out of. And I think that's why family and friends around you is so important but also how they feel because it's not just me going through it they're going through it as well with me so it's important that other people who are going through it with you get the support that they also need once you have an illness as serious as cancer it's always with you you're worried about it's going to come back for me i was worried about that my twin sister would have it my cancer wasn't genetic she was checked out anyways and pretty didn't have any polyps or any signs of cancer my uh granddad and his daughter, my auntie, they uh, both got bowel cancer at later stages of their life, in their 80s and 70s. They both passed away from cancer. For me, yeah, obviously it was different because I was 38. So yeah, you're, you're worried that it's going to come back. You're worried that it's going to come back somewhere else. So it's important to listen to your body. Although I'm lucky that it was found at stage two, I ignored the signs for about many months before I went to a doctor. And I think you know that could possibly make the difference between stage two stage three and four and what your recovery is going to be like as well